Hey folks, Atari here. I've been playing around with this Robo 3D printer for a while now, and I think I've got the hang of it finally. Uh, the thing about 3D printing is it's very much a hacker-minded hobby. There's a lot of trial and error involved in the process, and most consumer-grade printers do lack a lot of the out-of-the-box features that some of the higher-end printers include, which leads people like me to go ahead and build their own upgrades. Uh, what I've done here is I've installed a Raspberry Pi with the Octoprint software uh, to make a self-contained Wi-Fi printer, and then I installed a webcam to uh, capture time-lapse videos of the print process, as well as some LED lighting for better video capture. Uh, and then I've, you know, kind of rejiggered the cabling and the filament uh, feeds so that they're going to, uh, they'll move a little bit better and they don't get caught up in the, uh, in the works inside. Uh, it just makes for an all-around better experience. Um, so this video is going to walk you through the process that I used to install these physical uh, upgrades. Uh, but I will have a link in the doobly-doo and probably up here in the corner, uh, a link to a uh, full how-to article about, uh, about installing and, and, and setting up uh, uh, Octoprint on the Raspberry Pi, or, or OctoPi as it's called. I will put a link to that. I'll have a full write-up on AirborneSurfer.com uh, so you can follow that guide there. Uh, but again, this is going to walk through the, the physical installation, and uh, with that, with the write-up on the software, that should get you through uh, pretty much uh, the gist of it. The first thing I'm going to fix is the zip tie loop for the cable loom. Having a zip tie here has been holding the loom a little too rigidly, and has led to a few failed prints. I've already cut the zip tie since removing the hood, and now I need to replace the mounting point for the zip tie. I found a suitable two-piece cable loop on Thingiverse that holds the loom in place while being loose enough to allow some play in the tension. Remove the two screws holding the loop mount in place, then replace it with the base of the two-piece print. Hang on to the second piece for later. Next thing to do is install some lighting. I picked up a self-adhesive USB-powered LED strip from Amazon and ran it along the interior of the hood. Be sure to start with the USB plug on the side with the cable well. Uh, this is the same side that the loop mount is installed. Now, before we put the hood back on, go ahead and unplug the USB cable and the power cable from the printer. Place the hood back onto the base of the printer with the cable loop on the same side as the well. Make sure all the wiring is tucked inside the hood before pressing down to properly align the screw holes. Then, screw the hood securely in place. Now, gently lift the printer and set it on its side. Make sure to hold on to the print cartridge and the bed as they're likely to slide around. To install the Raspberry Pi, we're going to need to siphon some electricity from the printer's power supply, specifically from the AC input coming from the switch on the back of the unit. The power supply on a Robo 3D printer is a tough sum to remove. There aren't any screws or anything, it's just held in with friction, very tightly. As you can see, it's taking quite a bit of effort to remove. I've found that shifting it down at an angle, back and forth, will garner the quickest results, but your mileage may vary. So here are the terminals. These four go into the Arduino board that controls the printer, and these three are for the AC- what the sh- Blue? Brown? Green and yellow on live? This could get somebody killed! You see, standards exist for a reason. Well, they exist for many reasons, but one of them is safety. International standard wiring colors are such so that one does not accidentally connect the wrong conductor to the wrong terminal, or worse, touch the wrong live conductor. This is wrong! But it's wrong! This is sh It's good, sh right? I mean, bad. At least the god terminals are clearly marked. <sighs> anyway, 
We're going to need to tap into these leads to direct power to a standard 110 volt outlet so that we can use an off-the-shelf power converter to power the Raspberry Pi. But we'll start by loosening the terminal screws and removing the leads. I picked up this outlet saver at Micro Center for a couple of dollars. Essentially, it's a 10 inch long grounded extension cord. Take a pair of scissors and cut off the plug end, then strip away the outer casing, leaving just the outlet end and the exposed inner wiring. At least these wires are the proper colors. So now we just need to strip the end of the insulation off of each of the wires so we can hook them up to the terminals. Now remember kids, ground is green like grass on the ground. White is neutral because it's a neutral color. And black is live because black lives matter. Anyway, so we reinsert the leads from the switch into the proper terminals then insert the new leads from the extension cord into the appropriate terminals as well and tighten the retaining screw. Then simply reposition the power supply back inside its retainer with a good shove. Now we're going to need to run a USB cable to connect the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi and because the Arduino is mounted so close to the edge of the base we're going to use this right angle USB cable to make the connection. Now, even with the low profile of the right angle cable though, we're going to need to remove the Arduino to plug in the cable. So just remove these three mounting screws from the Arduino and carefully plug in the USB cable. You can use the existing wires to hold the new USB cable in place, just be careful not to pull any of the wires from the Arduino. Screw the Arduino back into place, and you're done with step two. I found a simple mount for a Raspberry Pi on Thingiverse that I also printed. If you get the whole size right, you can use screws to mount the Pi in place, but I'm just gonna use glue as it's a little easier than drilling out the holes. Apply the glue to the mount and press the Raspberry Pi board into place. Some glue should come through the holes in the Pi and mushroom over to provide a pretty good hold. Clamp the parts together until the glue sets. Apply glue along the perimeter of the mount and press it into place on the bottom of the printer. Make sure to hold it tightly against the base of the printer until the glue sets. Finally, plug the printer into one of the USB ports on the Pi. Plug one end of a USB to micro USB cable into the power port on the Raspberry Pi and the other end into a wall wart power converter. I picked this one up at Tashi Station for about 5 Imperial credits. Just make sure it's rated for at least 5 volts and 1 amper. Plug your power converter into your hacked up power outlet from earlier, and now your Pi is powered on by the main switch on the printer. Again, you can use the existing wiring to hold your new wiring in place. I picked up a short USB extension cable to connect the lighting to the Pi as well, so I just need to connect that. The last USB connection is made for the webcam, which will record our time-lapse videos. For this, I'll thread the USB cable from the front of the printer through the cable well to the underside of the printer and connect it to the Raspberry Pi. Before setting the printer upright, go ahead and insert the cable loom in place inside the loop installed earlier, then close it with the locking piece, then carefully write the printer. This is a widget that I designed myself in Tinkercad, and I'll put a link to it in the doobly-doo. What it does is it clamps onto the edge of the print bed and allows you to mount a clamp-style webcam level with the print bed so that you can capture time-lapse video that's stabilized to the y-axis. Stabilizing one axis is nice because otherwise the motion gets really messy and you can't really see much detail when you're printing. Lastly, we're going to turn the printer around to the back so I can install the new spool holder that I printed. This is a replacement for the stock holder that hangs off the side of the hood. This one keeps the footprint of the printer a little smaller and keeps the filament closer to the center axis of the printer, which helps keep the feed steady, preventing jams and tangles. And it just grips onto the side of the hood and slides down to lock in place. Now, if you'll install these upgrades as soon as possible after setting up your Robo 3D printer, you'll find that you're gonna get a much better and much more consistent uh, quality of your prints. 
and you'll have a lot fewer headaches along the way. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, click that little subscribe button and uh, be sure to share it with your friends. And uh, in the meantime, uh, what would you like to see me 3D print? Leave an answer in the comments below. And until next time, tally ho, y'all.